Hello everyone, Andreas here, this part 11 of my robot arm project. And first of all, I want to thank you all for the support. It helps a lot, uh, keeps me motivated. And before you get too excited, this lower joint is currently not working. Um, there are some big bearings inside um, and I ordered them from China because they are a little bit difficult to get uh, in Europe in this size but uh, they should arrive in about two weeks um, but uh, the, um, this part is functional now the motor is running not at full power because then I have to keep cool the motor drivers and also I already damaged the arm with itself um, with a software error so I set it them arms to a low current and so we can not damage it but first I show you some of the movements So it runs. Um, I have this um, oh, weight. It's aluminium. Uh, it's about 800 or 900 grams. Let's take a measurement. So, yeah, it's about 800 grams. So keep in mind the motor is running not at full capacity. Well, it's rather dangerous, I think. So, uh, as you can see, it's working and also the power is incredible um, with this motor here and inside and the all whole construction. It's, it's a major improvement to all my previous arms and I'm super happy and excited about the results. So let's take a closer look to the robot. That's the power supply. It currently runs on 24 volts. This is the stepper motor for uh, this motor here for the elbow. Um, this is an Arduino Due with the RAMS FD shield. It's a stepper uh, 3D printer shield. It has two stepper motor drivers. Um, they are also not cooled, so you can't run them at full uh, capacity. So the motor sits here, uh, as you can see here behind this, that's the motor and here will be the 
large bearings are still missing. Okay, the motor is here. Here is the pulley from the motor. And then inside there is the timing belt with a gear like this. You can buy them on stock. I've uh, machined out did a little bit to make them lighter. They are about 200 gram if you buy them and now they are at 100. I think they are still tough enough. I added also, I had to add a, a splint so I drilled uh, the hole through uh, the excess and put in this small bolt because the torques are so immense and you can't uh, fix it with a screw on the axis it will won't work so i have to do this here also um, but here i've done it already because um, it slipped uh, through the force is so immense on this part so i doubt you can 3d print these gears i think they will break uh, sooner than later then from uh, back to the arm from then here timing belt goes there and I it already uh, cut this uh, gear loose. That's what I meant with damage the arm itself. So I enforced it, added a few screws and a lot of acetone to fix this. Um, the rotation motor here sits here and drives uh, with a small pulley this gear and this small pulley drives the gear attached to the forearm. The motor on the forearm has this pulley inside here and then we have this uh, twisted belt. It's twisted on 90 degrees and here 90 degrees again to get to the, for the, uh, the position on the front. Then if you go on the other side here's a small pulley again and a belt tensioner and this one. Um, the encoders are as last time absolute encoders one is here one is inside there to measure the angle there one is here and one will be attached here um, so in the front is uh, some cheap robotic servo um, but this part i think is quite easy to replace if you want to use something else and the most of the cables running quite good inside i think this solution is okay because i didn't get a large enough slip rings to make it an endless rotation but with this approach we have about plus minus 220 degrees of movement freedom and i think this is enough for the fir uh, first um, operation then the cables all run here also from the models go inside there under the bracket here and getting out there so from here I'll, I will use some cable tubes to go to the controller I think um, because there's some less space uh, to f uh, guide the cables inside Remember there, uh, this gear has to sit somewhere there and the motor will be somewhere there. That's the next thing I'm printing. So let's take a look to the cut files. This is what I've got so far. And uh, here this is the top, uh, bottom motor, it's still missing. So if we hide this one, so you can see the uh, assembly I've told you on the robot arm. Um, was the transmission and these are the big bearings who are still missing. If we just take a look inside, here you see uh, the motor and with this transmission going upwards here and here 
and now take a look inside we have a motor for the rotational joint with its transmissions here and then we get here here's the wrist attached it's coated with these two bearings and then we have the wrist can hide it there is the drive pulley the twisted belt here as a printed gear in the robot i used uh, aluminium one then we've got the transmission here there you have the, uh, is the encoder attached and this is the wrist you can also hide it uh, with the robot servo and also a bearing to get the straps out of the servo mounts so that's the construction uh, for now you can download all the files on github so what is to do next um, as i said i wait for the bearings i've got a rotational base on ebay i think it's some furniture part and i will use this for a first test but it's uh, just a prototype and not for the final version because i think this is rather difficult to get so i want to use as much standard parts as possible so it's easy to assemble for other people so um, thank you very much for watching i'm thinking about doing a video um, about some tips and tricks for assembling or 3d printed part uh, next week or so so stay tuned See you.